in your face and we're back rc guy garage here i'm feeling a little bit yeah feeling a little bit okay right now i'm gonna work on the big rock today I'm gonna find out what exactly happened with what i call the crunchy gears oh i think we got some crunchy gears yeah we do you gotta be kidding me something's crunchy oh something on the rear end <laughs> i give up guy that's it so anyways, if you want to see this episode from Mercy Guy Garage, you already know what we're here for. You know what we're going to do. Crack open into the big rock and we're going to see exactly what happened with this thing. Where do we get the gear crunch kind of uh, issue? And don't forget, those RC Guy Garage soldering stations, they're going to be going on sale soon. Get yourself one. All right. So anyways, RC Guy Garage here. What we've got on deck, we've obviously got the big rock right here. I am doing the two camera thing because uh, I actually watched part of one of my two camera things i thought it was pretty good because hey you get to see my face so anyways we got the big rock on deck uh we did have a crunchy gear situation that i like it's been this long so since i did that video it's been that long since i once again touched another rc so yeah so let's see what's going on let's see where that crunch is coming from so yeah Oh yeah, by the way, these uh, body clips right here from Hot Racing, the tethers themselves are mint, the body clips are junk. So it's kind of like one of those give or takes. They've got the little 30 degree bend or whatever it is. You can see right here, they got the 30 degree bend. It just doesn't work. It's just, it's just wrong. So anyways, that was kind of weird doing that. I'm also been working on this battery tray. So this is a uh, this is a uh, Habao Hyper MT Plus Two battery tray that you can see I've I've already uh, sliced off or or nipped off uh, the one side there. You can see this is the way it goes on. I just used a uh, just use a hacksaw and a hacksaw that piece off, and I'm gonna fine tune and adjust these little nibs nibs <laughs> these little nubs right here. To see if I can get this battery tray to fit better inside the big rock to give the chassis just that little bit more support that I think it needs. So this battery tray is so far, it's a, it's a hit. All right, big rock, fairly stock. Um, the only thing right now that I have on this truck that is not stock is um, the hot racing like ball ends. I got rid of the M2C. Hexes that I originally had on there, they just were not for me. They just were not working out. Um, that kind of, I guess, is uh, honestly, for me, the M2C for this Big Rock was a regret buy. I do have the M2C motor mount, but I'm not going to install that until until I at least swap out like this chassis. I want this chassis to self-destruct a little bit further than it has in which, why am I even, why am I doing this? I'm doing that because, because I can, and I think it's something that's going to work, so. I do have a new chassis, too. I don't know. The other upgrade, which was a major upgrade, which I think may have also helped assist in causing some of the issues. I still am not positive where the crunch is coming from. I'm thinking it's, I'm actually thinking it's rear end crunch. Um, but I don't know. It could be spur. I do have the optional steel spur gear, but you know what I think I'll probably do? I'll probably switch it over to the plastic one. I do have an Arma factory plastic spur gear. Uh, the CVDs, front and rear, are the upgrade. I did do a video on that. I really don't know if it's that much of an upgrade. It's a weird thing to say that. I see the benefit. There is a benefit to go ahead and going with the metal CVDs on this, but there's also a negative because now you have that much more rotational mass. Even though this truck is now punched up to punch level five, I think that's the highest it goes. Whatever the highest punch level setting it is, I think it's five. It's still a dog, man. The ESC that comes in this big rock... That BLX ESC? Nah, I, I don't. I I don't like it. So I have something else for that. 
But anyways, I'm just going to still run this thing. I'm still going to run this thing as is. The heck was that? I'm still just going to run this thing as is, uh, probably until it's, like, toast. So. But I do have a um, castle copperhead system to go ahead and go in this bad boy. So that's the plan. We'll see. Or should I take the vortex system? Throw the vortex system in this and then put the copperhead in the vortex. I don't know, man. Next time on RC Guy Garage. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we're going to rip into this to see what's going on. I know that was a lot of talk, but it is what it is. All right. Now you can see my chassis is actually fractured right there. So there's a little bit of a fracture happening right there. It's cracked all the way through, but it's with that battery tray uh, installation. It's it's actually been it's actually been fine. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pop out that center screw. I'm gonna pop out that center screw. That way we can pull that uh, motor plate back out. And you know what? That'll give me the opportunity to recheck the bearing that um, is in this because this is the replacement motor. So it might be good that we're cracking this thing open anyway. Uh, but I'm gonna start there first. We're gonna see if the um, we're gonna see if the it's the center diff. Uh, yeah, center diff. Well, it is kind of a center diff. We're gonna see if that spur gear on that uh, slipper diff uh, is is the issue. So, so I should have left the strap in there. If I leave the strap in there, what you do is you use the strap to help pull that out and yeah that is now not going to do that for me is it nope so i'm gonna have to use a screwdriver to see if i can pry that out there we go Pry it out without bending the screwdriver. I'm gonna pull out the drive shaft. Come on, guy. Get it together here. Alright, get that off. Drive shaft itself is still totally fine. Now we're gonna hopefully pop this motor out of here. Check this bearing. This is a sealed bearing. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty right there. That's how you're gonna want to see that. That's how you're gonna want to see that bearing moving. This should be eating my face. Like that, I think. Alright. Or maybe like that. Okay. So I'm going to slip this stuff back on here just to kind of keep things together. The bearing didn't have to come off. It just made it easier for me to get it off that way. And that screw, obviously, you know where that screw goes. There. And this obviously goes in the end. That's getting kind of chewed up. So. It's getting kind of mangled. All right, so now to pop this out, we've got to arrange things a little bit better. Pry up on this little pull thing here, and then just weasel this forward, preferably with a pry bar. I think that's what I used last time. But you need to get something in there to pry on it. I think I used a, uh, I think I used a three-quarter ratchet last time, the handle. There we go. And look at all that junk in there. So... 
There is definitely got to be a way to keep that junk out of there. So, it's actually looking like the spur is fine. That's not a good thing. So that means it quite possibly could be the rear end. Ah, nah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm going to pop this open. I'm going to see what that looks like. It's shark finned. It also looks like it has good contact. And it looks like the teeth are basically there. So I am going to pop this cover real quick. We'll see what this looks like inside of here. Let's see what it looks like. Hopefully keep that together. Gearing wise and mesh wise we were fine. That bearing is already junk. That bearing is fine, just needs to be cleaned out. bearing is fine just need to clean it up so because the teeth actually look meant that gear crunching has most likely the rear diff dang it I think all right. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I'm going to disconnect the motor now. Uh, just from this, just to make it a little bit easier just to work on. So, orange, yellow, blue, and the fan. Don't forget to disconnect this fan wire. Try not to pull on it by the wire. Keep that away. But you can see how much junk kind of gets stuck under there. That's a lot of crap that got in there. Look at that. That's a lot of junk. So because this gear actually looks like it's all right, because um, the gear looks like it's all right, it, it does look like we're going to have to crack open that rear differential. So... Uh, that seriously is a bummer, man. So that most likely means that that rear diff is junk. I'm hoping I'm remembering things right. I do believe it was the rear diff. I mean, look at that pile of junk right there, man. That's a pretty good sized pile of crap. All right, so let's crack open this rear diff to see what's going on. Two screws right in through here just to pop the uh, bumper away. Oh, I didn't expect that to come all the way through like that. Uh, apparently when I reassembled that, <laughs> I messed up putting the screws back together. That's all right. No big deal. We'll flop that away. Flip this little guy over. We're going to go after the four screws. So one screw here, 
one screw there that's going to take that bre uh, this skid plate and um, little piece off there skid plate skid plate and bumper it's also the back screw that attaches to the um, diff case housing Got that screw out that wasn't really necessary. But it'll be interesting to see where I put the other screw. So now this piece should pop away. Look at all the sand and grit that gets stuck in there. Now I'm going to go after um, these two screws here, just to pop that link out of the way. So one, two, and then the two uh, top sh uh, shock screws, pop that away so I can flop things out of the way. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be standing up for the uh, rest of this session. So I might fade myself in and out. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll look up at the camera and lock eyes with you. That was a pretty long one. Same thing with that one. That was a long one. And so was that. So all those are long screws. Let's pop the shocks away. Pop the links out of the way. Flip it back upside down. Go after the two screws that are right there and there. That's going to be, I think it's a 2.5, right? 2.5, yep. That one, and that one. Now I'm just going to keep my hand on it as I flip it over. And pop this little case off. Look at that grease. Doing exactly what it's supposed to do. The gears look destroyed. So that was my issue. So I did end up blowing this rear differential. So the big rock is down and out. So it looks like I'll be replacing the um, this rear diff because this is completely blown. So, so that's what happens. I want to say additional stress. If you look inside of here, you can see pieces of gear, pieces of gear. So we definitely had a uh, catastrophic uh, rear end explosion with the Arma Big Rock. So there will be no repairing of that vehicle right now. But what I can do is we can go online and do the online thing. We can check and see online what are going to be my choices. What are my choices on replacing and or fixing uh, this big rock do we go with something maybe like an upgrade so anyways uh if you want to check that out with me let's uh let's break into that so a main uh let's see here i'm obviously going to type in big rock v3 see if that helps any so there's the big rock Still looks like it's on back order. That's why it's in red, expected on June 9th. We're going to click on the big rock, and then hopefully we're going to go into, I'm going to go into uh, parts first. And I already know that it's an input gear, so we're going to fill up the cart. We're going to throw an input gear in there. Continue. Um, and then this right here would be the uh, BLX differential case. Add that, 
because you have to buy that as an assembly. And yeah, I think that's it. So the total for that would be going to the cart. Look like it would be, um, I don't know how much it would be with tax, but $16.98 is, is what we're looking at, okay? And then I'm going to open up another window, and I, I can't remember, like, if this is how it works, but A main, go into A main. Now we'll just go to, probably didn't make any sense to do that. Big Rock V3. Probably didn't even need to do any of that. Option parts. So I'll click on option parts. We'll scroll down. Now, this is something that I thought about right here, but unfortunately, it's on back order. 30, 33 bucks, then with tax, like what, 36 bucks or something like that? So, isn't there a hot racing diff? I thought there was a hot racing diff. Now, I'm going to have to go over to Horizon Hobby. Actually, you know what? No, I don't. I'm go over to Arma. Arma RC, 50 plus, we will click on the big rock, it's got its own little spot, we will click on option parts. So here is a CNC metal crown gear and a CNC metal input gear. That's what we would need, but if we went that route, we would also have to get this separate input case. So. We'll just start throwing some stuff in the cart. We'll throw that in there, toss that in there, toss that in there. Ah, I think it's 19 bucks. <laughs> and now we're looking at $44.97, so like 45 bucks plus tax, whatever. Uh, it obviously says tax excluded shipping. Uh, but the curiosity was I thought Hot Racing had stuff. It's just these guys aren't going to list hot racing obviously because they just want to sell their own parts. Inter G. I know it's in tech. <laughs> but Inter G. I N T I N T E G Y I think is what it's called in Tegi. Alright, so we'll go to Integi, which I like Inter G better. We could, I wonder if, if I search anything, if it could be for, I'm a big rock. I don't know if that, we are conducting a search, nothing. Definitely not a uh, good site for searching for parts. Not a very, um, Integi's energy. Integi's not a very intuitive uh, site. So if I do hot racing, 3S, 4S, uh, BLX, that, I think that's probably it right there. Universal fit parts for Arma 110, Big Rock, 3S, that's, I think that's it. So there it is. So you can see you got Amazon and eBay. You've got the uh, aluminum differential carrier case. Oh, but the input gear and pinion is 50 bucks. Oh, oh my God. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that's going to be a no. This is the differential. Oh, it's back on it. Oh, does that mean I literally have to go to the dome? So I could literally get the stuff from most likely. The checkout process, blah, 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 review terms. I agree, whatever. Checkout via Horizon Hobby. Ah, crap. So I think that's pretty much the answer right there. Right there. It looks like if I'm going to move forward with this, get the CNC uh, from, you know, Arma, get the CNC crown gear, 20 bucks, 
get the input gear, 20 bucks. So we're looking at 50, well, in the end, check out VRIs and Hobby. Uh, if I sign in, it'll do all the stuff. So yeah, it looks like it's gonna end up being like 50 bucks to fix that big rock. And in reality, it kinda almost half the times that by two because even though kind of the rear, the rear is obviously what my problem is, and I did not check the front. There is the possibility that that front could potentially be an issue. You do get a lot of nose landings, man. But I'm just hoping that it's just the rear end because... It's constantly under power, doing wheelies, doing all that good stuff. That would be uh, that would be the that would be the decision right there. So, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this episode from Marcy Guy Garage. This was literally a nothing episode from me, so I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is, and uh, just get out there and rip something, like I always say. So, why don't you just get out of here? All right, so I guess that's. Um I guess that's pretty much where this video is going to end. I am going to put this big rock back together, broken as it is, and I do have to make that tough decision on what I want to go with. Seems like my options are kind of semi-limited. You also have to remember that the reason why the big rock is so resilient and the reason why the big rock is so good is because of its light weight. So once you start adding rotating mass... You start adding heavier parts. Aluminum is going to be heavier than the composite plastics that are all in this model. Once you start doing that, you start probably, well possibly, you start possibly losing the benefits that this big rock uh, vehicle had to it. So anyways, this is RC Guy Garage. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I actually don't even know what this episode looks like because I just now have to edit it. And I'm hoping everything worked out the way I wanted it to. I did check one thing and one thing did not work out. And I think I messed it up. But it was different. It was trying in a new way. And uh, like I always say, just get out there and rip it. Um, get out there and rip something. That seems to be like the, the new saying. Get out there and just literally just rip something. Rip into a bag of chips. Rip into a chocolate cake. Rip into, a, rip into an iced tea. Or ripping to an RC. So, anyways, RC Guy Garage, I'm out.